أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين. Today we are starting a new chapter, which is about the conquest of Khaybar. The Battle of Khaybar represents the final expulsion of the Jewish tribes in the Central Arabia at that time. The two tribes who had been expelled, they migrated to Khaybar, and it was the closest Jewish tribe to Medina. We know that in the Battle of the Trench, the Jews of Khaybar helped some of the opponents and persuaded the Banu Quraiza to also break the treaty with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Khaybar was known to have the biggest and most magnificent fortresses in Arabia. The entire city was living inside completely walled fortresses and thus it was impenetrable for the Muslims who did not have any major weapons at that time. This was one of the big issues. Therefore, the Muslims realized this would be a very difficult battle. The main reason to attack Khaybar was to primitively attack because the people of Khaybar, they would do anything to get their land back in Medina. So it was a preventive attack to safeguard Medina from the attack of the Jews. Khaybar had no treaty with Medina and in those days every single land had to be prepared for attack. So the Prophet ﷺ announced to go to Khaybar and he took with him around 1,700 men. The Prophet ﷺ camped away from Khaybar at night and started marching to Khaybar before Fajr and when they finally came within the distance of the first fortress, they saw the people leaving with their clothes, tools and axes etc. to harvest the dates. As soon as they saw the Muslims, they rushed back, running, saying, Muhammad and his army has arrived, and they ran inside, shut the doors and sealed them. The Muslims seized the property piece by piece and conquered the forts one by one. The first fort was Fort Naim and its conquest took 10 days. Afterwards, the Muslims conquered Fort al Saab ibn Mudad. Then came Fort Qalat al-Zubair. Then the Messenger of Allah وسلم, came to their other two forts, al Watih and al Sulaim, to conquer. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam besieged them for ten nights. People of these forts asked the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to let them go and spare their lives. These people hastened to ask for peace and to be allowed to leave in safety and left their wealth in return for that. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam agreed to their request and so these people worked out a treaty with him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam allowed the Jews to stay in Khaybar on the condition that they work in agriculture and spend their own money on it and that the Muslims would receive one half of their crops. This was in spite of the fact that the Muslims had the right to expel them if they wanted to. As the leaders of Jews went to the Prophet ﷺ to negotiate the terms of surrender that the Jewess Zainab ibn al-Haritha inquired about the Prophet's favorite food, so she killed a lamb from her flock, seasoned the shoulder with a deadly poison and roasted it. When the treaty negotiations were finalized, Zainab pushed her way into the Prophet's presence and offered him the meat as a gift. Zainab ibn al-Haritha poisoned the whole lamp, but especially the shoulder. When the Prophet wasallam and the Sahaba sat down to eat, he put a bite in his mouth and as soon as he did, he said, Everyone stop eating. He said that, but unfortunately one of his companions by the name of Bishr ibn al-Bara had already eaten it and it was too late for him. The Prophet Muhammad wasallam said, The shoulder of the lamb has told me it has been poisoned. Subhanallah. So he spat it out of his mouth. As for Bishr radiallahu an, he swallowed a little bit and fell severely ill. A number of other sahabas spat out the meat before they swallowed, so they had to be treated. The Prophet ﷺ then called the tribe who gifted him this meat and asked about poisoning the lamb and their lies. 
Eventually, they accepted that they did so to kill him. They wanted to prove it, that if the Prophet ﷺ would be a true prophet, then he would know about the poison from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it will not harm him. They knew that the Prophet ﷺ had been saved, therefore he must be a prophet, but it still did not affect them. As a result of this poison, the Prophet ﷺ felt the pain for the rest of his life for around four years. So much so that on his deathbed, he said to Aisha radiallahu anha, I still feel the effects of the poison from the woman of Khaybar. Here we conclude today's episode. Stay tuned and Jazakallahu Khair. Please don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to our channel Zil Noreen. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. سلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين